He's been bringing in worthless samples for assaying. Yeah, you'd think he'd give up. No, well, not Gus. You know, I've got an idea how we can have some fun. With Gus? What do you got in mind? Well, Gus always leaves the samples and heads straight for the saloon, right? Yeah. So why don't we fix it so the assayer hunts Gus to tell him that he's finally made that rich strike? Well, you think the assayer will go along with it? Sure he will. Besides, we haven't played a good old trick on Gus for a long time. It just might work. When he comes out, you follow him over to the saloon. I can't wait till I see the look on the old coot's face. His throat's a little dry, Minnie. I'll be right back. How you doing? Hmm, howdy, Joe. Horse. Hey, I said give me a whiskey. Where'd you get in town, Gus? Oh, well, Minnie and I just rolled in. Another one. And move a little faster next time. Then when I buy this place, I might decide to keep you on the payroll. <laughs> What'd you do, hit it big, Gus? Yeah, can't never tell. Hey, Gus, how come you ain't stopped by the house to say hello lately? Uh, ain't been out that way for a long time now. What do you mean you haven't been out that way? I saw you up by the North Fork of Little Beaver just the other day. Uh, you, you need glasses, Joe. I don't know who you saw, but it wasn't me. Gus, I, I saw you the day before yesterday. I was up on Sawtooth Ridge, and I saw you down the meadow. You need glasses, too, Hoss, because I wasn't there either. I told you I ain't been out that way. Gus! Gus! I got great news. That ore will run $3,400 a ton. You hear that, boys? I finally hit it. Bartender, get me a drink. Get everybody a drink. And we all hope it's worth a million dollars to you, Gus. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I know some of you people think this is a joke, but if it is, it's on you. Gus's ore is jewelry stuff, the richest I ever saw. Rich! I'm rich! Where'd you find it, Gus? What are you saying, Slade? You heard me. I never saw Richard go lord my whole life. Where's the strike? I'm rich on you. I'm all about that. Come on, you on the planet, Rose. Where'd you find it, Gus? Where's the strike? I said they saw you on the Ponderosa. Oh, no. Gus, is that where it is? Is it on the Ponderosa? You two saw him on the Ponderosa. Now, we all heard you say that. Let's get in here. Come on, boys. Everybody up the bar. Come on. Drink the rum. Come on. Drink the rum. That's the time. It's time. Fire. Let's go. People, you figure heard you tell Gus he'd seen him on the Ponderosa. Everybody in the saloon, I reckon. <laughs> now, when Noss is falling, shot my mouth off, too. Oh, it isn't anybody's fault. Everybody will hear about it sooner or later. San Francisco is probably buzzing with the news right now. 
Pa, you don't, you don't suppose old Gus really struck gold on the Ponderosa, do you? No, I do not. Never found any gold on this ranch. Virginia City, the other side of the city, not this side. I suppose he did make a strike on our property. What would we do, mine it? The only way you can make any real money in mining gold is by going into it in a big way. Bring in monitors, bring in hydraulics, wash down the mountains, get rid of all the trees, sink shafts until you eat all the gold there is out of the ground, and maybe you've made a lot of money, but you've also ruined a ranch called the Ponderosa. And I happen to like the Ponderosa the way it is. When it comes to that, so do we. But Gus didn't uh, file any claim, did he? No, and the fact he didn't file a claim is going to make a lot of people think his strike was on somebody else's land, namely ours. Exactly. That's what keeps worrying me. Once people get the gold fever, they lose all respect for other people's property rights. If they think that gold is found at the Ponderosa, they'll overrun this place like ants. I think we better get in the town and talk to Gus and just put a stop to all this talk about gold being found at the Ponderosa. The whole thing's ridiculous. The way they're telling it around town, Jim Slade, the assayer, came in. He said Gus's samples were jewelry stuff. Yes, the richest gold ore he'd ever seen. Thank you, Perkins, that's all. I got here as soon as I could, but I see you already know about it. Do you think I got where I am by depending entirely on you for my information? No, sir. I'm, I'm sure you didn't. That's the first time you've been right in six months. The assay report. Did you get the details? Yes, sir. The yield is 3,400 a ton. Nuggets, dust, or quartz? Gold-bearing quartz, sir. Very good. If it were nuggets or dust, it could be just a little pocket worth only a few thousands. But if the samples are gold-bearing quartz, old Gus could have found himself a whole mountain of it, worth millions. Rumor has the strike on the Cartwright property, the Ponderosa. If it is, it won't do us any good. Oh, stop acting like a woman. But, C.J., if it's on the Cartwright land, it belongs to the Cartwrights. Don't try to think, Henshaw. Now, go get that old prospector and bring him over here. Go on. Yes, sir. Perkins. Sure it's good to have you back in my store again there. But we don't see enough of you around town anymore, either. What's the matter with you? Why don't you come in once in a while, huh? Say, uh, uh Mr., uh, Mr., uh, say, Gus, I never did know your last name. Schultz, I think, near as I can remember. Got a few more things wrote down here that I'm going to need. Anything you say, Mr. Schultz, you just name it. You feeling all right this morning, Wooly? Feel fine, sir. Feel fine. Yourself? Uh, I need salt pork, bacon, tea, beans, and uh, yeah, a little shovel here. I certainly can. Getting all this stuff together, you must be figuring to head out towards your mine. That's what you figure, is it? Now, uh, put your money away, sir. Your credit's good anywhere in town. More so in here. Yeah? Well, that's a change. Last time I came in here, you tried to sweep me out with the trash. Oh, now, let's not be like that, Mr. Schultz. You take people too serious. Why, uh, we're all friends around here. That's so. Strange, ain't it? I've been in and around this town for years. Been elbowed away from every bar and eating place. Been the thought of every unkind joke anybody could dream up. Now, all of a sudden, everybody wants to buy me drinks. Call me friend. Why do you reckon that is? Well, I'm sure people didn't mean you no harm, Gus. That's an easy thing to say if you ain't the one getting laughed at and shoved around. Uh, when are you figuring on going out to the mine, Gus? Well, now, what's that to you? Unless you're figuring on following me to find out where it is. We ain't, Gus. But you know there's a lot of people in this town just waiting to try it. Now, what you need is a bodyguard. Oh, you applying for the job? We figure we might keep you out of any trouble you might get in. In return for knowing where the mine is, I guess. Or a thousand a month, maybe. <laughs> no, thank you. Willie, I'll need one of them there picks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess holding the mine ain't as easy as it sounds, eh, Gus? Takes a lot of sweat. Costs a lot of money to work it right. Well, I didn't find that mine by sitting in the shade and whittling. Need special equipment to get the gold out of there, won't you? Of course I will. Think I'm going to dig it out with my teeth? A thousand dollars will go a long ways towards buying that equipment, won't it? Long way. What you getting at, Willie? Well, I'm a plain-speaking man, Gus. I reckon a thousand dollars would buy a good interest in that mine of yours. Maybe, uh, 20%? Like maybe half of 
Oh, come on now, Gus. I'm making you a serious uh -huh, offer. And I'm making you one, too. Now, what do I owe you? No, no. Uh, I'll just put it on your bill. Well, service is looking up around here. Maybe I'll call back again. Oh, I'll pick up all this stuff later. Well, it'll be ready, Mr. Schultz. It'll be ready. Gus! Oh, Gus! Whoa. There you are, Gus. Mr. Schultz! Mr. Schultz? Uh, Mr. Schultz, I've been looking all over for you. Mr. Shasta would like to talk to you. You hear that, Willie? Mr. Shasta is a big, important man. Owns maybe a dozen of the richest mines in these parts. Big house, servants, fine horses. The way I hear it, he's got money he ain't even counted yet. <laughs> maybe you'd like to raise your offer and bid against Mr. Shasta. Mm. Nobody can do that. When does he want to see me? Uh, now, if it's convenient, uh, Mr. Schultz. Right now, be just fine. Come on, Minnie. We're going to go calling on Mr. Shasta. We're ready. <laughs> Will this be satisfactory, sir? Not for me. <laughs> but uh, should impress a man who's been used to a steady diet of sow belly and jackrabbit stew. <laughs> Get that ready, please. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Uh -huh. Oh. Mr. Schultz, this is Mr. Shasta. Howdy, Mr. Shasta. Mr. Schultz, good of you to come and see me. I was just about to have a little snack here. Care to join me? Oh, sure. Here, let me help you. See anything else no here you like? them there. That's All cool. right. Yeah. Now, would you care for a drink? Oh, you sure, yeah. You prefer brandy, uh, bourbon, or champagne? Well, whatever you're having. No, no, you name it. Well, I've seen champagne in them little buckets a few times, but I, I never tasted it. All right, then champagne it is. None finer anywhere. Tastes pretty, but don't have much jolt to it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Here, let me pour something else for you here. Napoleon brandy. I'm sure this will be much more to your taste. There, try that. That's good drinking liquor. Hey, yeah. have some more. Oh, thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Let's sit down and have a little chat. All right, don't mind if I do. Oh, here. Over here in my chair. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Mr. Schultz, be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I guess I am at that. But I wish you'd call me Gus. Every time you say Mr. Schultz, I think you're talking to my father. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Gus. Gus, it's a known fact that you've made a very rich gold strike. Now, you've been a miner long enough to know that it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get that gold out of the ground in commercial quantities. Been thinking about that. It's not a job for one man, or two, or even ten. It's a job calling for manpower, machinery, and know-how. Well, I wasn't figuring on doing it all by myself. We're in good grub you got here. Thank you, Gus. I guess I operate a number of mines, big ones. I can set up an organization to handle your claim. Bring in men, machines, drill shafts, build a stamping mill, I can process more ore in one week than you could in a whole year. Cost a passel of money, wouldn't it? Money's no problem, Gus. I'm offering you a partnership in Shasta and Company. Here, $5,000. Earnest money. Show you my good faith. Come on, take it, Gus. It's yours. You, you ain't giving this to me, are you? It's an advance against your share of the profits. All you have to do is sign a simple agreement. Mr. Hensaw, I'll show you where. If you just sign right here. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Shasta. Just sign, sit back. Without doing anything else, you collect 25% of all the gold we take out of your claim. Just sitting there, Gus. You're a wealthy man. Do you like this home? Oh, yeah. Never been in a home like this before. In six months, you can have one just like it. You won't have to work another day of your life. Uh, I, I, I got to think about it. Gus, I'm offering you a fortune. 
There's not another company in the country would make you a deal as good as this. But I, I can't sign no agreement. I'll, I'll make it $10,000. No, 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 here. I, I got to go. I got some things to take care of. Just a minute. Gus, I, I wish you'd make me a promise. That you'll give me a chance to meet or better, any offer that might come your way. Oh, sure, sure, Mr. Shasta, and, and thanks for the grub and uh, the liquor and... Uh, well, that's all right, Gus. I'm sure we can work out something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's dealing with somebody else. No, John. Well, why did he turn you down? If it was any plainer, it'd bite you right on the nose. He didn't want to turn me down. He wanted that money so bad, he was drooling. But he couldn't make a deal because he doesn't own the claim. Now it's obvious that the strike is on the Ponderosa. Well, that's the rumor, but I was... The rumor has become fact. Now I know what I have to do. <laughs> Gus makes his move, they'll pile in on him. Going up on the strike, I says to many, many, you're gonna have the best oats there is the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, Gus. Oh, Mr. Gus. Well, congratulations. I hear you find yourself a gold mine. Well, I uh, I've been lucky at last. <laughs> you sure have. Uh, would like to join us for a moment, a little bit of conversation? Don't take a minute. Excuse us, boys. Come on over, Gus. Sure, Mr. Sharp, huh? Hey, sit yourself down. Howdy, Gus. Howdy, Joe. Hoss. Gus, you, uh, you sure stirred up a fuss in this town. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Well, you, you got no right to ask a man where he found gold, Mr. Cartwright. It ain't nobody's business where my strike's at. Absolutely right, Gus. Of course, it isn't any of my business, except if it's on the Ponderosa, it is my business. Well, I never said the strike was on your place. Yeah, but Gus, you didn't say it wasn't, neither. Gus? Gus, how about you making a, a little sort of public announcement to the effect that it isn't on the Ponderosa? No, no, I ain't making no public announcement about nothing. Now, Gus, and nobody gonna... can make me either. Of course, now, I'm look, gonna... start telling folks where it ain't. And before long, everybody's going to know right where it's at. You're I'm not going to lose anything. Go right? You're not going to lose anything. Well, it didn't help very much, did it? Let's get on home before somebody takes a claim in our living room. Got him coming. Looks like we got company coming, Minnie. Afternoon, Gus. Nice day for a ride. <laughs> You're a shrewd one, Gus. I know now I underestimated your ability as a businessman. But I'm ready to talk now. I don't reckon we got anything to talk about, Mr. Shasta. I'm going to sweeten the pot, Gus. 15000 in cash and a 30% share of all the gold we take out of your mine. Now, that applies no matter where your strike is. All you have to do is show it to me, and I'll take care of the rest of it. There you are. 15000 cash. I'm sure sorry. I just can't do it. 
Is that your last word? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Gus. Extremely sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, our friend Mr. Schultz needs a little persuading. Yes, sir, Minnie, you're going to have a good life. A lot of votes. Yes, sir. And you're gonna have a good life. Ain't, uh, ain't you fellas kind of long way from town? You should have told Mr. Shasta what he wanted to know, Gus. Been a lot easier on you. And like I told you, you should have hired a couple of bodyguards. Because now you're going to need them. Oh! What do you mean he didn't tell you where his strike is? sent out there to get information from me. Now, why didn't you? Well, he kind of collapsed before he got to that, sir. If you'd let us handle it our way, we could have got your information. If I'd let you handle it your way, the man would be dead by now. I never would get the information. We did the best we could, Mr. Shasta. And we did like you said. We never even touched his face. Now, do we get our money? This money is for keeping your mouth shut. Now, get out of here. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Strangers everywhere, and more coming every hour. The hotels are full. The only two words you hear on the street are gold and ponderosa. Ponderosa? Well, ponderosa is very big. A man could waste a whole lifetime searching unless he knew just where to look. The rainbow chasers know this, so they stay in Virginia City waiting for Gus to stake his claim. Yes, sir, but when he does stake his claim, then the rush will start. And the Cartwrights will move in to protect their property. You worry too much. In a situation like this, a man doesn't fight the inevitable. He makes it work for him. Henshaw, if you owned a ranch as lovely as the Ponderosa, and you saw complete destruction coming, wouldn't you be willing to talk terms with a man who could do something about it? Well, wouldn't you? Yes, sir, I, I certainly would. And so will Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Chester. Cartwright? Come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, you know Mr. Henshaw? Yes, Cartwright. Of course. Uh, may I have your hand? Yes, sir. Thank well, you. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Thank Won't you. Come this way, please. It's quite a while since I've been out here. Yes, it has been quite a long while. ride. I might add a very dusty one, too. <laughs> Last time I was here, I seem to recall you're pouring me a glass of excellent brandy that did cut the dust from the throat. Well, let me refresh your taste. <laughs> Thank you. Just a drop. I still think this is the most beautiful ranch house I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Lots of excitement in town. People pouring in from everywhere. So I understand. But I guess the, uh, the merchants are doing a landslide business. Yes, they wish they did that kind of business every day. <laughs> well, good luck and good health. Thank you. Mm. 
Excellent brandy. Even better than I remembered. <laughs> yes, indeed. Very fine. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. It's been a long ride. I'll stand. Cartwright? Are you aware that you are sitting on a powder keg? Oh, really? What are you getting at? You're a rancher. You deal in cattle, lumber, and land. Now, gold has been discovered on the Ponderosa. Now, hold on just a moment. There, there has been the report of a gold strike, but uh, no proof that it was on the Ponderosa. Well, I have reason to believe that it is. And wherever gold is discovered, trouble usually follows. Well, even if it were, this is a private ranch. It's closed to prospecting. Nobody can or ever will stake a claim on this property. It's a commendable attitude. A man should protect what's his own. But I'm a mining man. I've seen this happen before. And regardless of whether it's a private ranch or whether it's illegal to stake a claim on it, people will pour in by the thousands. They will trample you right into the dirt. You're in serious trouble, Cartwright. <clears throat> well, if I'm in that kind of trouble, I guess I should get the law into this. I guess I could uh, apply to the army for troop support. Well, it depends on how soon they get here and in what numbers. And besides, when they do, soldiers will probably desert to hunt gold on their own. It's happened before. Mr. Shasta, I believe you have a plan. Yes, to get there first with the most. You need me, Cartwright. I think we should form a partnership for our mutual profit. Together, we make a deal with Gus Schultz. You give me the exclusive mineral rights to all the land between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, in return, I move in men and the most modern equipment. I do all the work. And we split every dollar of profit evenly. This presupposes, of course, that the gold was discovered on this ranch. What about the, uh, the thousands of prospectors? What about them? Just a temporary nuisance. In the face of a big, well-organized operation, they won't stay long. But they would overrun the place. Probably, just like they did in California. And right here, when the Comstock load was found. If the, if the gold were discovered here, Mr. Chester... How would you go about mining it? By the most efficient method. I see. Would that include uh, the use of uh, hydraulic machinery? Yes, if that's the most efficient method. Isn't that the machinery that you used uh, at the Wentworth Ranch when you took that over by Gold Hill? That's right. Yes, that was very efficient. That machinery managed to turn a thousand acres of beautiful prime land into a sea of Mud, boulders, and rocks. Now, gentlemen, I'm afraid I... I don't intend to let you do that to the Ponderosa. Oh, don't be hasty, Cartwright. Well, I've made you what I consider to be a very fair proposition, which you could profit tremendously. And if we work together, I'm sure we can even improve on that. Mm. How would you go about improving the Ponderosa, though, Mr. Shasta? Won't you turn it into a wasteland? No, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. This is a beautiful ranch. It's the only legacy I have for my sons. I can see you've closed your mind. Well, I can understand your point of view. I need scarcely remind you, though, that I'm not easily discouraged. <laughs> Thank you for the excellent brandy. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And sir. Gentlemen. Good day. Good day. I saw Shasta leave. What did he want? Well, Mr. Shasta wants to go into the mining business with us as partners right here in the Ponderosa. Isn't that nice? Joe, so you better go find Gus. Bring him out of here now. I wouldn't talk to us before. Well, he has to talk to us now. He's no match for a man like Shasta. 
Go find him. Hog time, but bring him here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Nothing we can do, boys, so why don't you just go on about your business? Joe? What's this all about, Roy? Old Gus's mule come into town with Gus draped over her back. Been beat up pretty bad inside. Well, go on, man. Guess. Not good. Is there any chance I can talk to him just for a minute? He won't make much sense until tomorrow, Joe. All he keeps mumbling is that he never meant to make the cart ride so much trouble. I told him three months ago that his heart wouldn't stand much more, and his beating just about did him in. Look, I'll go back to the ranch and tell Pa we'll come in town tomorrow and stay at the hotel. Let us know as soon as he can talk. I will, Joe. Thanks, Doc. Gus, you sure have this town stirred up. Line up now and get a $50 grub stake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Schultz's strike a $5,000 finder's fee. In addition, in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Now, in the interest of fair play, no one starts the hunt until Mr. Shasta gives the word. That way, everyone has an even chance. How's it going, Henshaw? 212 men so far, Mr. Shasta. We should have 300 before the day's over. Very good. Very good. I'll be at home. Yes, sir. Sign up now and get your $50 grub stake, everybody. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man a $5,000 finder's fee. And in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. All right, sign up, everybody. Yeah, Shasta Mining Company will give that man 25% of all profits coming from any operation of that man. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. What's your name, Mr. Henshaw? Where's Mr. Shasta? He's not here, Mr. Cartwright. He's at home. He is, is he? Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Yusuf's strike a $5,000 fine. Now, you stay at the hotel and wait for word from the doctor. I'm going to see Mr. Shasta at his house. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to announce you. It's all right. I think you'll see me. Well, come in, Cartwright. Mr. Shasta, I'd like you to call your men out. Would you care for some brandy? I said I'd like you to call your you men out. You gave me some very fine Mr. brandy. Mr. Shasta, I, I just came from your office where Mr. Henshaw is recruiting prospectors. Yes. I was agreeably surprised. Henshaw tells me we'll have over 300 men by nightfall. What do you think they're going to be doing the prospecting? between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, any fool with half a braid in his head knows that's Ponderosa country. Now, wait a minute, Cartwright. You can't prove that. I don't have to prove it. Everybody knows it. I've been doing a little research here. This I'm should interest you. Research. Just tell Step Mr. Henshaw here. to stop recruiting yeah. those prospectors. Sawtooth and Little Beaver. That's wild, rough country up there. Yes, it is. Now, these townships are yours. Descriptions and deeds are duly recorded. That's right. Now, on a map, a boundary is a line drawn on paper. But on the ground, out there in that tangle of forests and canyons and cliffs, where is the boundary? Right where it's always been, Mr. Shasta. 
The line runs from the tip of the lake over to Mount Blue. I own everything south of that. So the descriptions say, but where exactly is that line? I just told you, right, where it's always been, right there. Now, if that boundary was ever completely surveyed, which I doubt, it was a long time ago. There are no fences out there. Where are the witness trees, the cornerstones? Who can say exactly where the Ponderosa ends and the public lands begin? I can. Now, I take the negative view. You may own part of that land, Cartwright, but not all of it. Mr. Chancellor, let's get one thing straight right now. The first man sets foot on any part of that land south of that line, I take you to court. Wait a minute, Cartwright. I expect you to. Mining and litigation go hand in hand. That's been the history of it. Every mine in the Virginia City area has been in litigation ever since the first shovel of earth was turned. It's always been that way. Same thing exists today. I have an excellent legal staff, Cartwright. You're going to have to fight this battle on my terms. Unless, of course, you want to reconsider the offer you turned down when I visited your ranch. <laughs> You certainly have a right to expect the law to protect your property, providing, of course, it is your property. And from what you tell me, there could be some doubt about that. Now, Roy, I told you, Shasta's is trying to tie the Ponderosa up in litigation while he plunders it. We know that, but the point is that the boundary is not marked. And running prospectors off of what they believe to be public land could lead to an all-out shooting war. Well, how do I stop him from going on that land? Well, we found Bill in the recorder's office. Oh, Bill. Hello, Ben. Glad to see you. Thank you. Oh, listen. I need a job done very quickly. How long do you think it'll take you to survey the north boundary of the Ponderosa? Well, if I can hire a full crew and don't run into bad weather, 50, 60 days. That long? Oh, easy. Well, you better do it. And start work right now. You're hired as of this minute. Right, Ben. 50, 60 days. Well, how do I keep them off the Ponderosa for that length of time? Hotel looking for you. Gus is gone. I know he's gone. Do you know where he went? No. I was called out on an emergency, and when I came back, he was gone. Town seems to know it. They know it because I told him. I wanted all the help I could get. His heart's so weak, he could die if I don't get him back into bed. Doc, those men don't care about Gus. They just want to find out where he staked his claim. Well, all I want is to try and save his life. Well, if he went back where I saw him, he'd be out of sawtooth by Little Beaver. Now, you boys go after him and find him quick. I'm going to stay in town and see if I can get the army in on this and talk some sense into those gold hungry buzzards. Stand a better chance if we all split up. We might. And again, you might know something we don't. Try to get rid of us and go after that $5,000 finder's fee all for yourself. Not to mention 25% of the mine. Now, look, we've been working together for months. And you think I'd do a thing like that? We work together for small change. This is big money. <laughs> No sign of on the flat. He's a meadow and a little beaver. Too bad old Gus just didn't come right out and tell you that he found gold on the Ponderosa. Yeah, and it would have saved everybody a lot of trouble. I'll tell you what. You two split off and I'll take the meadow. All right, if you don't find him, you know where we'll be at. Sure, and the sheriff hunting old Gus, too. 
Yeah, Joe's some prospecting around here. He's got a better idea of where he is than we have. So many things easier for us. Gus? All right, Gus? No, I ain't all right. But I don't care. Look at me. Been nothing all my life. Then, a couple of months ago, Doc says I'm gonna die real soon. I lived like nothing. Now I was gonna die like nothing. I never thought you were nothing, Gus. Bless your heart, boy, I know that. But I wanted more. Just once before I died, I wanted the respect of everybody. People to look up at me. Think I was a man worth knowing. And I made it. Didn't I, little Joe? Yeah, you made it, yes. Been a big man since my strike. Everybody talking about all of us. Buying me drinks. Why, people even start calling me Mr. Schultz. So, this is where your strike is. Yes, sir. You found her. This is where she is, all right. What's the matter? My arm. It's not dead. I can't feel anything. Hey, couple of you men help the sheriff get a travel I made. We gotta get him to the doctor. Pike and Fallon had run. Them two beat me bad. Trying to find out where my strike was. And it's here. Right here. Behind that rock yonder. Gotta be the biggest joke that ever was. But I was... Big man, Mr. Schultz. You were a big man, Gus. Found Gus's strike, not him. Fallon with you. I was there first, and I want that money. I'll tell you who gets the money. The man who staked the claim. Now, which one of you is that? Well, we Come on, speak up. Oh, oh, don't. Don't. All right, that'll be enough. I think it's about time I had something to say about this. Now, that strike is on Ponderosa country. Nobody stakes a claim, do you understand? Absolutely nobody. Don't listen to him. That is public land out there. I don't know all of you, fellas. My name's Ben Cartwright. Those of you who do know I'm a man of my word. 
My word is that nobody sets foot in the Ponderosa. Nobody. You two are under arrest. Old Gus made a dying statement that you're the ones that beat him up. Shasta paid us to do it. He wanted the gold mine. There's your gold mine, Shasta. All two sacks of it. Gus bought the ore. We found the receipt in his pocket. See, there never was a gold mine. Just a lonely old man who spent his whole life looking for the big strike that never happened. Now, you thought Gus was pretty funny, didn't you? you? Used to laugh at him, make him the butt of all your jokes. But one day the doctor told Gus he was gonna die. But before he went, he wanted that one big moment of glory. Well, Gus got it. This time, the laugh's on you. Come on, Chester. The gold rush was over, gone, like a soap bubble in the sun. The Ponderosa was just as it had always been, and we went home. Chuck Hill. Red Pony and his renegades hit a ranch there this morning. Sweetwater this time. About 28 known dead, 12 ranches looted and burnt. Austin Little Joe rode up that way two days ago. Sweetwater again. Just stopped. Right in the middle of a word. Well, I'd better get back to the Ponderosa and get up to Sweetwater. Put him up, will you? Lieutenant? I'm Lieutenant March, sir. We were on a routine training patrol and ran into an ambush. You better get the wounded inside the house. Get a doctor from town. Hurry up, Joe. Sergeant, take the wounded inside. I lost half my men before I realized what hit. How big a war party? 35, 40. I counted at least 20 rifles. The rest were armed with bows and lances. Well, they'll have more rifles now. They just looted the Sweetwater ranches.
things in there real deep. This, this is going to hurt. Let's go and get it out of there. Fine, harass, and delay the renegades until a major force arrives. Hardly possible with one non-com and one trooper able to ride, but I can scout this whole area. Well, Lieutenant, my sons were up in that area. You won the ranchers, and I haven't heard a word from them. I'm riding with you. Be happy to have you, sir. Let's go. Out. It looks safe here. I don't believe there's any of them Indians here. You need anything? Yeah, can I get us some more water? Sure. Here. Drink all you want. Plenty. No more? There's plenty. Oh, thanks. Campfire over there. I can see smoke about a half mile away. Maybe help. Maybe just a bunch of more Indians. No. No, they, they wouldn't give themselves away. I'll be right back. You'll be safe here in the shade. There's plenty of water here. I'll be right back. that horse and ride out. There's renegade Indians right over that hill. They're killing and taking scalps. The smoke will attract their attention and so will that gunfire. You heard me ride out. My little brother's out there with a broken arrow in his shoulder. I need some help and I need it bad. Why don't you help some man, Breck? Ain't gonna hurt you. Get back on that horse. Get going. those shots? A drifter, Mrs. Dawson. Just running him out of here. Mrs. Dawson, the man says his brother needs help. You were told to leave. You'd better do exactly that. I came here for help for my little brother, and I'm going to get it. You're wrong, my friend. Drop the rifle. I am an impatient man. Drop it! You better do what he says, Pilgrim. Jonathan Fraze is an old hand at shooting people in the back. My little brother's out there in bad shape. While we're standing around here talking, he might be dying. Give the man his gun, Mr. Fraser, and put yours away. Do as I say, Mr. Fraser. Now, you're the wagon boss, but I own the wagons. Isaac, please. We made camp so you could rest. We can't go on till you do. I'm supposed to rest with gunshots and shouts all over the place? You 
Stirred up quite a fuss, young man. Man's got a good reason, Doc. Doc? Yeah. Dr. Isaac Dawson, sir. Boys, it's the best luck I've run into in a long time. Doctor, my little brother's got a... Narrow in his shoulder. And you want me to remove it, huh? With these hands. Hardly possible. Guys, I thought you were in trouble. Just take it easy. See there, Doc? He needs immediate surgery. Looks like the Pilgrim was sure telling the truth. Isaac, you can't. Even if you could hold a scalpel, you haven't got the strength. Still, you've been at my right hand with hundreds of patients. This time, you'll be my right hand. That cut. I want you to take the patient over there, but gently. Gently. Estelle, the instruments. Operating on strays with raiding parties all around, you're gonna get us all killed. Mr. Cartwright, I'll remove the arrowhead, but there's a fee. Your services, you and your gun, until further notice. You got a deal. All right. Joe. We're in luck. We've got a doctor and a nurse, man. They're going to patch you up just as good as you. Now you can leave now. We can get along without you. Cut the shirt open, Estelle. Young man, this is going to hurt like the devil. So you'll help all of us if you lie as still as possible. Mr. Mulvaney, can you spare some of your bottle painkiller? Sure. Do. I don't want any of that. Just get it. Just get that arrow out. Right. You may leave and take that with you. Uh, swab that with some alcohol. Uh, easy. That's fine. A scalpel. A little higher. Now, with a firm hand. Good. Uh. Oh. Those hills, are they part of the Sweetwater Range? Yeah, they are. A lot farther than they seem to. Brett! Brett, take the first watch up on the hill. Why not him? He's the one who's spooked by Indians. Well, you know how I feel about Indians, but uh, I'd be glad to stand guard if you want me to. I don't want you. Now move out! Holler if you hear anything, no shots, and stay off the skyline. You'd be no good up there now. You'd be watching the camp and nothing else. If you ever get your brother patched up, you'll stand guard. I'll be ready. Red pony, huh? Hmm. Getting to be a small world cut, right? Ain't it too small? You, uh, you heard of Red Pony? Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of him. I... You know, I was going to ration this, make it last, but now it's beginning to look like I'm going to have more whiskey than time. Have a bite? Oh, no, no thanks. Guess you must have been wondering about us, huh, Cartwright? <laughs> Fine, warm welcome everybody gave you when you drove in. Way well, everybody jumped up to help you. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, I, I was. You know, I've seen a lot of wagon trains west, but I don't believe I ever saw a bunch like you. Now, two women, 
Two thieves, a dying man, a discard who should have been dead a long time ago. But we ain't a marching towards the golden promise of your grand and glorious Westcott right now. We've been there. We had a belly full. Now we're heading back east, running out with our tails between our legs. <laughs> God, it looks like you joined a company of the losers. Brother, you gave me quite a scare there for a while. You're looking at Perkins J. Bird now. It's just how I feel, Tom. It isn't the time for talk, Mr. Cartwright. Your brother needs rest. Thank you and your father for what you've done. I want no thanks. Dr. Dawson's getting the sleep he should have had hours ago. He mustn't be disturbed. And he's not my father, Mr. Cartwright. He's my husband. I wish you wouldn't. Yes, well, it's my fault that you're here, Anna. That's why I need a taste of this to get the taste of that out of my mouth. Smack dab in the middle of Indian country, war parties all around us. <laughs> I brought you out here to get you killed. No, Papa, don't say that. Oh, yes, not just you, all of us. All of us are going to be killed. Oh, why? Why didn't I leave you in Virginia City? It's one good thing about it. You won't even see them or hear them till it's too late. That's how it was at Bishop's Creek, Anna. Two hundred, three hundred of them. Half the troop were dead before we even heard a sound. Papa, don't think about it anymore. I should have been dead, too. I, I would have been if my horse hadn't bolted. He took the bit in his teeth. And he, I, I couldn't stop him any more than I could stop the wind. That was a long time ago. Now, the worst, worst part of it at all, my, my own daughter, my own flesh and blood doesn't believe me. Of course I do, Papa. Oh, sure. Sure you do. Just like the court martial board, believe me. I wouldn't do that. I thought I heard him call. I, I was just trying to help. With a gun on your hand? Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. But you're supposed to be in bed. We both are. Yes, but first I'm going to take a look at my patient. Come along with me. Look, Doc, I'm feeling fine. Well, just lie down there. Let me take a look. for him with this
What's it all about, Doc? Well, I, I couldn't employ any honest men to drive my wagons. In the face of all this Indian trouble, I had to take what I could get. Well, when you hire a thief, you expect him to try to rob you. I have two thieves in my employ, Breck and Fraser. They both have the idea that I have a considerable amount of money stashed away on that wagon. I let him think so. Uh, you're not only heading the trouble, you, you bring it along with you. No, not really. You see, they keep an eye on each other. Well, this is the first time either one of them has had a chance to get near my wagon alone. Look, Doc, why don't you be smart? I go back to Virginia City. Why take the risk? We'll the Indian troubles over with. How long will that take? Two, three weeks, a month at the outside. Huh? Trying to get back home, Mr. Godright. I want another look at the place where I was born. I want to see my son. See my granddaughter. I've never seen her. Look, I can understand that, but what difference does it make if you see her now or, or a month from now? I don't have a month. I don't have three weeks to spare, Mr. Godright. I'm a dying man. Get yourself some rest. Frazier said I should give you this. You're next to stand guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. Thanks, Anna. Guess I kind of talked too much last night, didn't I? It's all right. I didn't mind. And then whatever happens, I just want you to know that you're the finest daughter a father ever had. Thank you, Papa. Yesterday's biscuits. You must be feeling pretty good the way you're eating, Joe. No reason I shouldn't, is there? No, no. no you know, Joe, uh, <clears throat> I promised these folks that I'd ride with them. Be an extra gun in case they run into Red Pony. That's two guns. I can still pull a trigger. They ain't going to Virginia City, Joe. They, they're going east. Where is he? I don't know. How long has he been gone? Just a few minutes ago, I gave him breakfast. All right, all right. All right. What's all this about? Mulvaney's gone, along with half the shells we got left. He did it again, huh? Bishop Creek all over again. That time he left the troop to get chopped up, and this time he leaves his daughter. No, he wouldn't. He did. His saddle and his horse are gone, and the tracks lead straight east. He was drinking. He didn't know. Don't make no difference why he went or how come. A man out there alone ain't gonna last long. We're gonna have to go get him. Not me. I say good riddance. Well, my job is here. I gotta take care of the women Doc Dawson. Well, get with it. Jump me. They jump me before I could even draw. I don't know. I got, I got so scared. I, I couldn't think, Cartwright. I, all I could do was run. We better get out of here. There's more of them out there, too. They're liable to jump us any minute. Yeah, and they probably heard that gunshot. But they ain't too close or they had already been on us. Come on, let's get out of here. Sergeant, you and Burns take the West Fork around Half Butte. 
and then back to Virginia City. Yes, sir. Sergeant, just remember there are two of you and a hundred of those Indians. Yes, sir. Report back to headquarters when you get there. You can ride back with them, Mr. Cartwright. Well, my sons are still somewhere out here, Lieutenant. We better move out. We're wasting time. It's a good thing Mulvaney rode east to see what was out there. If he hadn't, that Indian scout had seen these wagons coming, and it'd all been over real quick. The rest of that war party will find a dead scout and two sets of tracks, and then they'll be all over us, thanks to Yellow Belly. Well, that's why we got to get moving and get moving quick. There's a stage station back on the trail to Virginia City. But that's behind us, west. Yes, ma'am. But we can find men and guns there. And even if we don't, we can fort up and make a decent fight of it. But we don't want to go back. Tell them, Isaac. We want to go east. We should have stayed in Virginia City. If you guide us, we might get back there alive. We'll make it. We'll save time by lightening the wagons. We'll jettison everything but what is absolutely necessary. No, Isaac. Not the gifts you're taking to your children and grandchildren. Presents from a man they've never seen or long forgotten. We'll leave them here and hope they delay and interest the Indians long enough to save a life or two. Pretty rough, Doc. Why well, is gonna slow down? No, no. Don't do it, Doc. I'll be all right. Oh! oh. You better stop and stop. Your husband needs you. Oh. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, I don't sit there staring at me like that. I, I don't like it. I wasn't staring. Yes, Papa. you were staring just the way all the rest of them look at me, like I was some kind of piece of felt or something. I suppose I am. No, Papa. That isn't true. What's the holdup? Dr. Dawson. Mrs. Dawson is giving him some medicine. Yeah, and I'm taking mine. Brave water. Hey, go ahead, Conrad. Tell him what I was doing when you found me this morning. You better go easy with that whiskey. We got a long ways to go. All right. And I'll tell you what I was doing when he found me. I was running, running away. Papa, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? What do you mean it doesn't matter? I was running away. I was going to leave you behind to be killed. Papa, I said it doesn't matter. I'm going to go talk to Miss Dawson. How's your husband, ma'am? We have two very sick men in this wagon. Little Joe's worse, huh? Burning up with fever. Infection, they said in. Stage station. Right around the bend. No sign of life. I'd feel better if there was some smoke in the sky. I'm just happy there ain't no buzzards up there. Get them out of here quick.
Well, but you're sure welcome. Here's some extra weapons. You take that side window. You cover the back. There's only three or four of them now. Not enough to make a real fight. But they'll keep us pinned down until the gunfire brings the rest of them. What happened to Joe? He got an arrow wound, me, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? We've got a casualty. The old man. He's going fast. Isaac. Isaac. Can you hear me? I went away for a little while, but then I heard you, and I came back. for my foolish stubbornness. I've done you all great harm. Shh. We'll be all right. Don't worry. You're going to be all right, Isaac. You will. No. We both know better. But at least there's no pain now. Please take care of it. She's a fine woman. She's gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right, too. No pain. No pain at all. man that ever lived. For you two to sing out of, out of a scalp by now. I'll tell you what, Joe. If we need any help, we'll sing out. Anna. Anna. Bishop's Creek. My horse didn't bolt. No. I nearly ripped his sides open with my spurs getting me out of there. And today, when I was supposed to be out scouting, looking for help, I wasn't. I was just. Trying to save my own worthless neck. Papa, why don't you stop torturing yourself? Worst thing I ever did was to bring you out here when I knew there could be trouble. I, I don't know why you even speak to me. You're my father. If I was you, I'd be ashamed to admit it. As much as we need the guns, there's one man here we could do without. You mean Mulvaney? I mean Bishop Creep Mulvaney. He ran and got a whole troop slaughtered. He's not the man to cover that corner. I'll talk to him. Anna, Mrs. Dawson can use you. Soldier, that, that 
barn gives us a blind side. A couple think to sneak in from the other side and come charging through before we ever knew they were there. Sure. You're all killed. Oh, any of you made a big mistake and paid a big price. Court martial, disgrace, lost career. You have a chance to even things up right now. The horse tell you what I did this morning. Yes, he told me. And you trust me? A man who'd run out on his own daughter? Things have changed now. He can't run. Twenty feet out of there, he'd be killed. You gotta fight to stay alive this time. Even a cornered rat or a coward. Rat, coward, animal, dog, tiger, man. You got a shotgun, you got shells, you got a six gun. What's more important, you got what very few other men have. Hmm? A second chance. Pa! Pa, it's over here! They heard those gunshots and they came running. And they'll talk to see how they're gonna do it and then they'll come. She wish that wagon wasn't out front. That makes two of us. But the barn back there isn't the only blind spot. The wagon out front's another one. You know, they could sneak in behind it, push it up to the front door, they'd be inside on top of us before we know what happened. Let's hope they don't think of that. Oh, they will. They will. We only had a little dynamite, two or three sticks, and blow the wagon to smithereens. They'd never be able to use it for cover. We could use a troop of cavalry, too. We don't have them either. I counted 12 of them out there. They're going to keep us pinned down until we run out of shells and then burn us out. I also spotted a horse out back. Now, if you give me covering fire, I can ride out and get help. Listen to him. Huh? You hear the panic in him? He's got the shakes. Wants to save his own hide. I'm an old hand at running, Johnny. I know all the signs. No, don't try it. Don't even try it. Stay right where you are. They'll kill you before you get ten yards. It's quiet now. It's worth a try. Better get back to that window. They'll be coming any minute. You can go back to your front window. I'll defend this one.
Last attack was supposed to cover this snake attack in the barn. It didn't work. Push that wagon right up to the door. All right, everybody. Get ready. It's going to be all right, Anna. Of course. I mean it. I mean it. It's, it's going to be all right. I want us to march. Of course, Papa. Yes. Could I... Could I take this? So what happened to Fraser? That's what I do best. White flag or no white flag, I'll kill you. Ready to leave when you are, sir. Miss Mulvaney? One request, ma'am. I'd like to send this back to West Point. They have a museum there for weapons used bravely and valorously. I'm sure they'd be proud to have it. Daddy would be proud, too.
explosion! Those pirates are after only one thing. If we keep them here, they're gonna get them. If you move out in five minutes with troopers Burke and Sloan and the prisoner. I'll give you covering fire to get you started, then fight a delaying action to give you some running room. Ponderosa Ranch. Due west of here. Now move out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I sworn I heard gunshots. Yeah. Small war party just up the draw. How many men do you lose? Those two. Who's your prisoner, Sergeant? Wabuska. The Paiutu calls himself a god. Wabuska, he's the one who's heading up those raiding parties, isn't he? That's right. We captured him three days ago, and we've had to fight to keep him ever since. Nobody's going to rest real easy until he's in federal prison. Maybe you can help me. I'm supposed to turn him over to the commanding officer of the Virginia City 116th Militia, Major Ben Cartwright. Well, Sergeant, I'm Ben Cartwright. Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa? Yeah, but the 116th was deactivated years ago. I'm Colonel Brill, sir. You and the 116th have just been called active duty. set fire to his mattress last night. Tried to burn down the jail. If it wasn't for a hack there, he could have done it. I had the thing burning pretty well when the smoke woke me up. Jail burn. But not Wabuska. Fire, wind, storm, and water are all friends of Wabuska. Even bullets cannot hurt me. Bad enough for Booster, believe me. He's got the whole Paiute tribe believing. Ah, Ben, I guess we all knew the militia could be reactivated. It's been a long time. You and I are a lot older. Yeah, we sure are. Then I got my orders. Maybe if I can get Booster to Fort Churchill, the rest of the chiefs will listen to reason. I don't envy you the job, Ben. But I gotta admit, I'll be happy to get him out of here. I'll be just as glad to be rid of him as you are. Hey, Paul. Sergeant Anchor and Little Joe did all right. They got about 20 men coming down the street toward the jail. Well, there's still some spirit in the old 116th, eh? Detail! Halt! Detail! Left! Right! Oh, I should better join in, sir. Right, Paul. Yeah, that is right. Major Paul. Sergeant. The son and I found 20 men, sir. 
We lost two coming down the street. Made the mistake of passing by a saloon. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, may I be short and simple? We've all been together in the 116th. And I've been recalled to active duty and empowered to organize a detail. Uh, I'm looking for volunteers. Well, it might help if, uh, if you told us what we were volunteering for, Ben. I'm organizing an escort detail. Take a prisoner to Fort Churchill. Oh, now, wait. Wait a minute, Ben. I'm not even sure that you have the right to call us together, but I'd overlook that. If it's my wife and kids I'm defending. Now, it's a prisoner detail, like I said. It's that Wabuska, ain't it? You think I'd do anything to defend him? I say hang him and get it over with. That's yeah. what I say. Hold it. It's a long ride. I came here looking for volunteers, not asking for conversation. If it's the town that needed defending, I'd be the first one to come forward. But I don't know anybody who'd volunteer to take that Paiute to Fort Churchill, what with the whole country crawling with war parties. Are there any volunteers? Come on, Spence. We've been hanging around this town long enough. <laughs> this is our chance to get to Abilene. Oh, with a bunch like this, we ought to make it through Indian country all right. Is that right? You and Joe going? That's right. Then I am, too. Tim Kelly volunteering. I say when it comes to fighting, one good cowhand is as good as four or five of them Paiutes. This ought to be a chance to prove it. Sorry, Ben. You understand, Ben. Coming. Wait. Wait. Hey. Oh. Hey. Uh, I got my foot caught in a, in a bar rail at Silver Dollar. Guess I'd been here sooner. I hear tell them Piotis got a whole new special brew. And I, I'd kind of like to try that one. So you count me in all, all the way. Now, that Pete Hansen there, he's got my brother Hack locked up for busting a chair off my head. Now, you tell old Pete to let him out, and, and Hack will come along with us. How about it, Pete? If we can get those two to fight Indians instead of each other, you'll have a couple of good men. <laughs> hey, Hack boy! I volunteered for you. Now, make sure you come along, or I'll move your jaw sideways some. I hear you, but you ain't gonna knock my jaw over none. He'll be with you, Major. Sergeant. Round up some supplies and ammunition for ten men for five days. The rest of you men, get your horses. Be back in an hour. Dismiss it. Indian country from here on out. Major, begging your pardon, sir. But I think we'd be better off without some of these men. Which ones? Well, those two brothers. Hey, give me some of that, wait. Give me that back. I'll give it to you. You, you young boys are like, Hack. You know I was drink, Bert. What about him? Fighting? Unreliable? Sergeant, have you ever tried to work out the night before? Not son. Yes, sir, I have. Lots of times? Yes, sir. You got over it, didn't you? Well, they will, too. What about that trigger-happy kid? He's liable to shoot himself in the leg or shoot one of us. Before we get to the top of that rise. Yeah, that's true. He might. But we're gonna keep him on anyhow. We'll ride a scouting order from here on in. Yes, sir. I'll ride point, show the men how.
gonna happen that I can't handle. Like I said, them Paiutes ain't much. Now don't try to be a hero. If you see or hear anything wrong, whistle. Have some of those peaches, I'd sure be obliged. It's been a while since I ate. Major! Where'd you come from? Out there. up friend here. Looks like you could uh, give a bobcat the first bite and come home with a fur coat. He just popped up, Major. I didn't see him or hear him come in. My name's Candy. Where are you from? Any town within 500 miles east of here. I've been there. What's your business? Trying to stay alive. How'd you find this camp? Simple. I heard it. I uh, walked up wind of the voices. I saw the guards. I didn't want to bother them, so I just walked on in. Uh, that Paiute heard me coming. He was watching and waiting when I walked up. I'm the only one that's doing any talking. Any of you men got names? Cartwright. Major Cartwright. Major? That sounds like army. Militia. Out at 16th. A militia, army, what's the difference? A big difference. No offense to the major. But if this was a regular army detail, you'd never got past those guards. Or maybe not, but I sure would have tried. I sure am hungry, Sergeant. Could I have a can of those peaches now? this one sing and you 
They'll bring them all right here. Candy. Candy. Now, what kind of name would that be? My name? After a while, it won't sound any funnier than uh, Steve. Or a horse. You've just come from the country which we're headed. What's it like out there? You're going to run into just about every Paiute in this part of the world. And some Shoshone and some Utes. All of them wearing war paint and hunting for scalps. Don't ask me how many. I was too busy hiding and too scared to count. You said you walked in here. Where'd you leave your horse? About two days, about 40 miles behind. We shot off from under me. You wouldn't have an extra horse, would you? Of that. Tell you what, I'll settle for another can of peaches. Devil did he go? I wish I knew. How you doing? Much to report. It's pretty quiet. No sign of the candy fella. A few night birds and some field mice making enough noise to keep me company, and that's it. They keep looking at those shadows long enough, they all begin to look like Paiutes. Yeah. Now, just as long as they don't make any sudden moves. <laughs> right. I'll see you a little later. I put this stuff with the fellas' six gun and carbine. I'll deliver it to his next of kin, if and when. The reason he's dead, he didn't obey orders. If he'd have stayed where the Major put him, even if he'd have whistled like he was told, he'd still be alive now. It is no matter. Tomorrow you all die. I was just telling him, Major, that on a mission like this, when one man disobeys orders, he can get a lot of us killed. That's right. <laughs> It makes a fella feel good. Everybody's so glad to see him. Well, it might be. If we know where you've been and why. Horse hunting. I told you I've been walking for two days. I figured those Paiutes owed me a horse. It took me an hour to find him. At least two hours unaccounted for. I wanted to make sure that brave was alone. There's only one set of tracks leading in. There's no smoke on the wind anywhere close. The one thing I didn't figure was the kind of horse I was going to find. You know this horse, Sergeant? Colonel Brill's mouth. A troop must have been completely wiped out after we left with the prisoner. 
Just as Wabuska promised. Paiute, Shoshone, Ute. Kill all soldiers. All white men. One more sound, you're gonna be wearing that gag. Well, anyway, they're gonna be looking for this horse come first light. No, we'll be gone by that time. You coming with us? I hadn't figured to. I got no love for the militia or the army. Saluting and uh, taking orders and saying sir just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I started off on my own when I found him. Why did you come back? Got lonesome. I figure when the Paiutes start taking horses away from the cavalry, a man alone doesn't stand much of a chance. So I'd like to ride with you. I'll even learn to salute. You learn to obey orders? Yes, Major. All right, from now on, we ride two-man point. Second one keeps the first one in sight. He keeps inside of the main body himself. We'll leave it an hour. Yes, sir. Spence, he ought to still be in sight. Thank you. 
Gotta get yourself a little shot, eye. Yes, sir. I got the guard duty right before dawn. Have a good rest. Thank you, sir. seen another sunrise anyway. And after what happened to Spence yesterday, I thought those Indians would be here last night. Come on, get up, will you? Hey, you can sleep when we get back to Virginia City. Get up. Where's that, Joe? You stand and watch. You'll leave me about 2 o'clock this morning. jail and I brought him out here just to get him killed I think it is. Yeah, that's when it. Come on, Chief. I didn't think could be stampeded into making more.
My turn. What they want to do. They want you to go out there so they can kill you. So we can all go out there one by one and they can kill us one by one. They're waiting, just waiting out there. Mate, now listen to me. Look what they did to Pete, Hack. Quiet. Did you hear me? Oh, you're gonna stay with the detail and you're gonna obey orders. Do you understand? Hack? Oh, Hack. <laughs> Shortly. They'll wait for full dawn now. I believe you're right. I'll trick back every half hour. Major. With your permission, sir. Something I'd like to get off my mind. Back there in Virginia City, when I saw the size and shape of this detail, I came within an inch of deserting. Cowhands. Plot busters. They didn't know a hand salute from a water bucket. I was sure that if they saw one Paiute or heard one shot fired, that they'd scatter so far and fast it'd take two weeks hard riding just to get them in sight again. Kind of wrong, wasn't I, Major? The Cloudbuster showed me how. That first day was just like I thought it'd be, but but after that first night, they pulled together quicker than any group I ever saw. Yeah, they're good men. All of them. Yes. It's your supper. If that's what you want to do with it, it's all right with me. Tonight they gather from all the camps. Tomorrow they set me free. You've said that more times than I can count. Now, since you don't want to eat, I don't want to listen, why don't you just open up? Tomorrow they kill you and all of them. I'm going to kill them. What were you saying? Ah. That's what I thought. Coyotes? To be done in about four hours. We'll move out in two. And they'll be waiting for us. Big reception party. Now, you came in from that way. How far are we from Fort Churchill? 
the crow flies or, or dodging war parties? Uh, straight line. About eight, ten hours. About the Paiutes, Shoshones, and Utes all banded together out there to stop us. That could be just plain too far. Belgian Steve, sir. I know. I saw it. Make the odds about ten to one. Yeah. Gotta stay there. Just set a range until they find out what we're gonna do with, with the chief and Wabuska. Why you do this? Nothing can save you now. friends for many years. I've been to your house. You've been to my house. We've exchanged many gifts of friendship. Long ago, yes. But now, all changed. You and I have not changed. We are still the same. But out there, things have changed. Many people have died. Many more will die. Thousands of soldiers will come. Your tribes will be destroyed, all of them. We will not die. Only the white men will die this time. Bullets will not hurt Wabuska. He laughs at white men's guns, and he will teach us his magic. Unetka, you're a wise man. How can you believe this? Oh, look at him. Wabuska, he rides through hundreds of bullets all this day, and not one harmed him. We rode through the same fire. Nothing happened to us. We were just lucky in the rest. That's all, Chief. He cannot be hurt. He will never die. It is written, 
Wabuska will lead our people to victory everywhere. In my own lodge, with my own rifle, I fired at him, and the bullet leave no mark. Will that guy trick you? No, he has great power, power to destroy our enemies. He's a man. He's a man like you and me. And if he has such magical powers, why doesn't he use them? Why doesn't he make himself disappear in a puff of smoke? Why does he allow himself to be captured by us? It was my wish. Take me to your strongest fort. I will melt away. Your strongest iron cannot hold me. All right, Winnick. Let's find out if he's a man or a god. If I should have put it into him, he'll bleed and he'll die. Major, you can't do that, sir. Sergeant, this is my responsibility. What are you afraid of, Opuska? This is only a white man's bullet. White men's bullets cannot harm you. You've said so many times. You're a god. You have magical powers. All right, let's see how these magical powers work right now. Stop him! Stop him! Wabuska, I see fear in your heart. You tremble like a woman. For this one, my braves have died. <laughs> He bleeds, like any man. I have been a fool. What do you do with us now? Go back to your people. Tell them Obuska bleeds. Tell them he cries. Tell them he's no longer your leader. Tell them that they must allow us to go through the Fort Churcher where he'll be punished. And speak to all your tribes. Say to them that there must be no more waste of lives, that no more blood must run in the sand again as it ran today, white man's or red man's. Tell them there must be no more false gods. Tell them this, Chief Winnick. Would you have shot him? You saw the death, the blood, the senselessness. Would I have shot him? Would you? Take charge of prisoner. thing I forgot to ask. Huh? What's this military duty pay? Volunteer duty, food, bandages as needed, and a big vote of thanks. Well, uh, do you think that vote of thanks could be stretched to include a horse and a saddle? You recall that Paiute kind of shot mine out from under me. Yeah, I recall. Yeah, I guess it could include that much. And more, maybe. We're gonna need some roundup hands once we get back to the ranch. Be hard work, but one thing for sure, the power won't be shooting your horse out money. Oh, no thanks. I'm not looking for a steady job. I got a lot of traveling to do. Kind of sounds to me like the man doesn't like hard work. Now, wait a minute. The two of you never saw the day when I couldn't work you both right into the ground. I could show you more riding, more roping, more bulldogging. Looks like you just hired yourself another hand, Paul. All right. All right, for a while. 
But uh, it's got to cut both ways. I can leave any time I get the notion, and you can send me down the road, same way. Sounds fair enough. Yeah, I guess it sounds fair enough. All right, boys, I guess we got ourselves a new hand. Mister, you got yourself a job. <laughs>